Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video in the Java series. In this episode, I'm going to teach you about while loops. Loops are very important in computer programming, and you'll see this in every major programming language, or any language pretty much. And it's a way for you to repeat your code. So loops, repeat, a way to repeat code. So the first loop that I'm going to show you is the while loop. But there's other loops that I'm going to show you, like the for loop and the do while loop, that'll help you repeat your code. So as you can imagine, repeating your code is very, very useful in computer programs because there's many different circumstances where you're going to need it. For example, uh, looping through an array. Let's say that you need to go through an array and look for a certain value. The, the easiest way to do that is to go through the array indexes one by one and find them using what's called a linear search. But uh, there's other circumstances where you need to use a loop for um, you know, parsing input, um, just literally anything, right? Loops are so fundamental to computer programming that this is a very important episode. Okay, so let's just jump right into it. Let me show you how you can repeat your code using a while loop. So the anatomy of a while loop will be, so you, you're going to do while, and then you're going to have a condition inside of the uh, parentheses here. And inside of these, uh, this code block here, you're going to have some code. So the way this works is, whenever the code gets this statement here, this line, or the compiler, you know, what's running the code, um, it's going to say, it's going to check to see if the condition within the parentheses is true. If it's true, then it's going to run the code inside of the brackets here. If it's false, then it's going to skip to the next statement. And this statement could be anything, you know, output, whatever, right? It's just going to skip the while loop and then go to something else, the next line. So that's called breaking out of the loop. If the condition is ever false, it's going to break out of the loop and go to the next statement. But if it's true, it's going to run the code inside of the loop. And then after it's done running the code inside of the while loop, it's going to go right back up to the condition here to see if it's still true. And if it's true, it's going to run it again. And then the cycle repeats. So as long as the condition is true, the code inside of the while loop will run. But if it's ever false, then it'll break out of it or skip the while loop and go to the next statement to run whatever code is there. And yeah, that's how a loop works, essentially. It's based on conditions and the code inside of the, the, the loop itself. So you just have to make sure that you know when the condition is going to be true and when the condition is going to be false so that you have predictable, predictable behavior. So let me show you how you can make your first while loop. Let's say that you have a number. Integer number is equal to 1. So you have a number variable. And we're going to say while number is less than 100, we're going to do system.out.println or sout number. So we're just going to print the number as long as number is less than 100. And then after this, we're going to do number is equal to number plus one. Or you can do number plus plus. That does the same thing. It's just say increment. Okay, so let's run this now and see what happens. There we go. So we get starting from one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way up to 99. It's printing the number one by one. So let's break this down. Let's see what's happening here. So you're creating the variable, which will be the number that's used with this loop here. And we're saying while the number is less than 100, which is pretty simple, it's just plain English, right? As long as this number here is less than 100, then you're going to run the code uh, inside, of, uh, inside of these curly brackets here, right? So it's going to print the number. So that's why uh, 1 was our first output, 1 here, because it made the, the number equal to 1. It's less than 100, so it's printing the number directly to the console. And then after that, we're incrementing the number variable by 1. So now at this point, at this line of code, it's going to be 2. Then it's going to go right back up to this loop here and it's going to say is two less than 100 yes it is so it's going to go right here print it out that's why we have two and then it's just going to repeat over and over and over so it's going to keep going up and up and up until it reaches 99 so at this point um, it's going to be 98 right here so it's going to increment to 99 it's going to go right back up here it's going to say while 99 is less than 100 that's true so it's going to print it out that's why we have 99 here so then 99 will be incremented to 100, and it's going to go right back up, and it's going to say, is 100 less than 100? No, 100 is equal to 100. So this condition is now false. So it's going to break out of the loop. This is no longer going to run, and then it's going to go to the next line here, and therefore the program is going to end because there's no other code to run. So that's why it says the process finished with exit code 0. So it only goes up to 99, but if we were to make this, if a while number is less than or equal to 100, then you can imagine what's going to happen. This time it's going to print out 100, but then when the number gets incremented to 101, it's going to stop running. So if you want it to go all the way up to 100, you can do that. There we go. That makes more sense, right? Because 
once it's from 99 to 100, it's going to say, is 100 less than or equal to 100? That's now true. So it's going to run it. So pretty simple, right? It's plain English. It's just while the condition is true, it's going to run the code inside the loop. And then it's going to go right back up to see if the condition is still true. It's going to repeat over and over and over until the condition becomes false. So you need to be careful though, because you can find yourself in a circumstance where the condition is never false. And therefore you're gonna have an infinite loop that just goes on forever. And that's kind of scary, right? So let's say that we have integer counter is equal to zero. This will just be a simple counter variable. And we're gonna do while true. We're just gonna put the true Boolean literal inside of there. Then we're gonna run the code inside of here. So while true, we're gonna say cheese is yummy. And then gonna, we're going to put the number uh, for the counter so we can see which uh, how many times the loop has ran, right? Makes sense. So then we're going to do counter. Or actually, we're going to put counter before the output statement so that we can see. Because it makes sense to print out cheese is yummy 1 because it's the first time running, not cheese is yummy 0 if we put it after. So we're going to do counter plus plus. Okay. So try pausing the video and just try figuring out what's going to happen here when you run this. It's pretty self-explanatory, so let's see what happens. So we run this, and there we go. So now it's running forever. Look at that. The number is going up really, really fast. It's only limited by, of course, like your CPU. So it's going as fast as it can. So eventually, once it reaches the highest limit of an integer, um, it should be about a little over 2 billion, it's going to have some weird behavior. I don't think it's going to throw an error, but it will have some weird behavior. It may go negative. It may go to some weird number just because, of course, like we saw before, integers are limited at, uh, at like what the range is, right? So if you want a higher number, you could use a long and it would go for a very long time. That's a good pun right there. <laughs> anyway, so you get the point. So if we, so what's happening here is since we're using, uh, so the while loop is asking for a condition and this condition I mean, it doesn't have to be like an actual condition. It doesn't have to be something less than or greater than or whatever, anything like that. It could also just be anything like a Boolean. It, like the only thing that needs to be inside of here is a Boolean value because a condition evaluates to a Boolean. You can use conditions inside of here, right? Same thing for if statements. As long as you have a Boolean inside of the condition spot, this is what I call it. So since we're having a true literal here, an actual true value, and it never changes because it's not tied to any variable that's changing over time, it's always going to be true. Therefore, the, the loop will run forever. So that makes sense, right? So just make sure that whenever you're designing programs, you make sure that your loops at some point will become false or else they're going to run forever and you're going to encounter issues. Hopefully you're liking this so far. I really like loops and this is very fun to test them out because you get to see some really cool stuff on the console. It's really fun for your first time programming to play with stuff like this. So if you want to have some fun, uh, maybe play around with this, see what kind of crazy things you can do. <laughs> um, but let, yeah, let me show you another uh, implementation of the loop here, the while loop. So this is a little more advanced, but let's say that you have an array, a array of doubles called test scores. So the, you can imagine that this might be like some sort of uh, test score grading application. So you have an array of test scores. We'll just make some up. So 13.4, 100.0, 90.5, um, 32.3, 5.0. So these are our test scores. And we want to go through each one and output if they're bad or good scores. And we'll say a, a score, let's put it here. So a score below 50 is equal to a bad score. And then a score above 50 is a good score. Okay. And if those are your standards, then you probably need to reassess yourself if you're using the American grading system. But uh, anyway, so the way that we're going to go through each of these scores here to check if they're good or bad is a loop. Commonly, you're going to use a for loop for this. You're going to see a for loop in the next episode. But in this case, we can use a while loop. It doesn't actually matter. It's just easier to use a, while, a for loop. But let me show you how you can do it with a while loop. So we're going to have a, uh, a variable here. You're often going to have variables associated with your loops just to, you know, base, basically it's they're going to be used for the condition every time. Not every time, but very often they're going to be used to, for the condition to evaluate to false at some point. Um, but in this case, we're going to use it for both the condition and also to access the array. So this variable here, this variable here will represent the index of the array so that we can uh, traverse the array to access each value one by one. 
So what we're trying to achieve is we want to start at zero because zero is the first index. And then we want to use a loop to increment it one by one. So zero, one, two, three, four, and access them one by one. And then once it reaches, you know, once it gets to an index that is not part of the loop here, I mean the array, um, then it's going to break out of the loop. Because of course, if you try accessing an index of an array that doesn't exist, then you're going to get an exception. So um, let's try this out. So we're going to make a while loop and the condition, I want you to pause the video and see if you can do this yourself without even knowing what, um, how I'm going to do it. See if you can find a way to loop through each element in the array, just based off your knowledge so far. Okay, let's do this. So we're going to do a uh, while index is less than test scores, test scores dot length. So test scores dot length is going to return the size of the array. So in this case, it's going to be zero, uh, one, two, three, four, five. So it's going to give us the number five, and this will just be the index. So while the index is less than the size of the array, then what we want to do is print out the score. So score test scores, and then we can use the index variable to access the variable from the array or the value from the array. So um, this will loop forever just because we're not changing the index variable ever. So after that, we can do index plus plus. So this will increment to the next index in the array. And then we can go back up to the condition to see if it's still less than the size of the array. And if it is, we can loop. If it's not, we can break out of the loop. So based on what we have here, let's go ahead and run this to see what it does so far. And there we go. So we get score 13.4, score 100, score 90.5, score 32.3, and score 5.0. Perfect. So it's successfully looping through each element in the array. So just to reiterate what's happening here, you're starting with the, the first index, which is zero because arrays are zero based. And then you're looping through the array by doing a while loop that has a condition. As long as the index of the array is less than the, uh, the actual size of the array, then we want to print out the the value using that index, we're just accessing it, and then we're going to increment the index by one, and then we're gonna repeat the process. So when this array runs for the first time, you're gonna get the index is gonna be equal to zero, and then the test scores.length is gonna be equal to uh, five, because there's five elements in the array, and of course zero is less than five, that makes sense, and therefore it's not gonna run again. But eventually when uh, the index is equal to four, that'll be accessed in the last element, right? And, uh, and then it's gonna increment. So it's gonna be five is less than five, which you know, obviously is false. So it's gonna break out of the loop and therefore you're not overreaching the index and trying to access the, um, the array with an, in the, with an index that is not valid, right? Because then you'll get a array index out of bounds exception. And so the final thing we want to do is actually check the score, right? We want to say if it's good or bad. So how can we do that? First, we're going to cut this out. And to do this, we're going to use what we learned in the previous episodes. We're going to use an if statement. So if the test scores link or index, so if the, if the score at that index is less than 50, how about less than equal to, how about less or equal than 50? Less than or equal to, yeah, less than or equal to 50. Then we want to say, bad score else if it's not less than or equal to 50 we can assume it's above 50 then we can just print out good score there we go so let's run this now and it should say bad score or good score for each of these so yeah there we go we get bad score 13 good score 100 good score 90 bad score 32 bad score 5 this is just an example of how you can make your loops even more advanced by adding uh, branching inside of your, your code inside of the loop okay so that's all I want to show you for while loops. In the next episode, I'm going to show you how to use uh, for loops, which are another very, very popular um, method of looping your code. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so thanks for watching this episode. If you want to see the code for this episode, I'll leave a link for it in the description below. There'll be a GitHub link, and you can find the, uh, the actual source code with comments and everything like that, so you can come back to it and bookmark it if you ever need to you know, refresh yourself on how to use while loops in Java. Because often you're going to forget your code and it's not easy to forget um, to remember code unless you do it many, many times. Eventually you'll, you know, con have it concrete within your mind. You'll never forget how to use a while loop. But uh, sometimes you may forget and you need to get a refresh on that. So, yeah, bookmark the code. You can come back to it anytime. 
And uh, another thing I'll be leaving in the description below will be a link to our Discord server. You can join there, you know, find some other people who are passionate about programming and love Java. You can ask for guidance. You can ask for help on a programming thing you're stuck on. If you're stuck on, maybe you're trying to design a program and you're stuck on something, you can ask them for help and they'll probably help you. And so, yeah, it's a great programming community. So make sure to join that link in the description below. The final thing I want to tell you about is if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month and you can cancel at any time. You get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, a cool rank on my Discord server so you can show everyone how cool you are, and also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So if that interests you, hit the join button below. Okay, that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe and peace.